Welcome to the new episode of the Inventory System. Today we'll fix the issue of opening and closing the UI. I've mentioned this problem before, and now I'll show you a way to solve it. We start by creating a new function in BP underscore MyPlayerController called IsInputKeyPressed. This function will be marked as a pure function because it doesn't change the game state and only checks for input conditions. The function will have two inputs and one output. The first input is named input action and uses the input action object reference type, allowing us to specify the input action we're checking for. The second input is called pressed key and uses the key structure type, which lets us define the specific key to monitor. The output is called return value and is of type boolean, returning true or false based on the input check. Next, we go back to the event graph to gather some nodes. We copy all nodes from the for each loop to the and node, as this is the section we'll move into the function. Now return to the eyes input key pressed function and paste the nodes you copied earlier. Arrange them neatly and connect all the execution pins to ensure the flow works properly. Before the return node, we need to add a branch which I forgot to copy earlier. To create it, grab the execution pin of the return node, pull it out, and press the B key to automatically spawn a branch node. Connect the result pin of the AND operator node to the condition pin of the branch. The return node after the branch will output return value true, which means the pressed key was successfully detected. Next, go to the for each loop section. Connect the action pin from the break enhanced action key mappings node to the lower pin of the equal node. Then, take the first pin of this equal node and search for the getInputAction node. This corresponds to the input variable of the function. Now take a moment to tidy everything up and arrange the nodes neatly. Keeping the layout organized makes it much easier to spot any incorrect pin connections and follow the flow of the nodes. A clear structure not only helps prevent errors, but also improves readability for anyone revisiting the blueprint later. Finally, Connect the press key pin of the function to the equal node that checks against the key from the input action. This connection allows the function to compare the specific key pressed by the player with the key defined in the input action, ensuring the desired match is detected. Just to clarify the logic beforehand, we'll create an IAUI close widget input action and assign it two keys. In the IMC default input mapping, these keys will be bound twice once for the escape key and once for the tab key. This setup allows us to easily search the input mapping context for the desired input action. When the action is found, we can then check whether the pressed key matches the specified key and return the result true. Now copy the return node and go to the for each loop section. Paste the return node at the bottom and connect the completed execution pin from the for each loop to this return node. In this case, the return node will output false, indicating that no matching input key was detected. Next, return to the event graph and use the eyes input key pressed function where it's needed in your logic. This will enable the newly created function to check for the desired input conditions dynamically. We start by selecting all the nodes from the for each loop to the and node and delete them. With the freed up space, pull the remaining nodes closer together to maintain a clean layout. Connect the is valid execution pin of the open widget node to the execution pin of the branch node. Remove the two reroute nodes as well. Next, drag the eyes input key pressed function into the graph to replace the deleted nodes. Now we need to adjust the interface because the input action was previously set up as a plain object. Double click on the close open widget node to jump directly to the interface. First, change the data type of the IA action key input to input action object reference, which better aligns with the enhanced input system. Rearrange the inputs by moving the lower input upward to adjust their order and rename the first input to input action for clarity. Save the interface and return to the player controller. Here, connect the input action pin of the interface to the corresponding pin on the eyes input key pressed function. Connect the key pin to the press key pin of the node. This links the key input to the function, allowing it to check whether the specified key has been pressed. This check now ensures that if the inventory was opened, it can be closed using the same key. Next, we want to ensure that any open widget, regardless of its type, can also be closed using either the escape or tab key. To do this, duplicate the existing node and place it below the original one. Connect the key pin to the press key pin of the new node. Now we need a new enhanced input action. Navigate to the input actions folder in the content browser. 
duplicate the IA UI inventory and rename the new one to IA underscore UI underscore close widget. After that, go back to the input folder and open the IMC default mapping context. Add a new mapping by clicking the small plus icon. Then, click on the None dropdown of the new mapping and select the IAUI close widget input action. Next, modify the key binding for IAUI inventory, changing it from tab to the I key. For IAUI close widget, assign the tab key as the first input. Click the small plus icon again to add a second key binding and assign the escape key as the second input. Once completed, it should look something like this. Save the changes and return to the player controller. Now, set the input action for the eyes input key pressed function to the newly created IAUI close widget input action. Finally, connect the return values of the two eyes input key pressed nodes to an OR operator node. This combines the logic so either input action can trigger the desired behavior. I can't emphasize this enough, take the time to organize your nodes neatly. Arranging them properly helps maintain a clear and structured layout, which reduces the likelihood of errors and saves you more time in the long run. No matter how simple the blueprints might seem, it's a good habit to consistently keep them tidy. It's a small effort that pays off significantly as your project grows. Compile and save the player controller. To ensure everything works as intended, we need to make a few adjustments to our widgets. Navigate to the UI, Widgets folder, and open the WB MainHUD widgets. Open the graph, and then the on key down function. Here, update the input action on the close opened widget node to use IAUI, close widget. This ensures the correct input action is being used. Next, we will optimize how we retrieve the player controller. Currently, we're using the get player controller node with an index of zero, which isn't ideal. Delete this node and replace it with the get owning player node. This change improves the robustness of the logic since get owning player directly retrieves the player owning the widget, avoiding potential issues with incorrect indexing or mismatched controllers. Compile and save the widget. Next, we need to adjust a few more widgets. Navigate to the inventory folder in the content browser and open the WB inventory widget. Open the graph and locate the on key down function. Since we updated the interface, you'll notice an error indicating that the old input key no longer exists. Right click on the node and select Refresh Nodes to update it. Set the input action to IA UI Inventory. As before, delete the Get Player Controller node and replace it with the Get Owning Player node to ensure consistency and robustness. Compile and save the widget. Now onto the final widget. Open the WB storage widget from the content browser. Again, open the graph and locate the on key down function. You'll see the same error. Right click on the node, select refresh nodes and update it. Delete the get player controller node here as well and replace it with the get owning player node. Since we don't have a specific key binding for opening the storage, leave the input action blank. However, if you'd like, you can assign the interact input action here which would allow the storage to be closed using the F key in our setup. Save everything, and you're ready to test it out. We can now open the inventory using the I key and close it with I again. Reopening it, we can also close it using Tab. Reopen it once more. If we open it again, try clicking to shift focus to another widget and then close it with either Tab or Escape. Everything works seamlessly. Next, we approach a storage box, open it, and close it using Tab or Escape. It seems to be functioning as intended. Let's head back to the storage widget. This time, set the input action to IA UI inventory. As mentioned earlier, you can also use the interact input action if preferred. Hit play again and test it out. Approach the storage box, open it, and now you can close it using the I key. Experiment further to ensure everything behaves as expected. Test it out. That wraps up this episode. In the next episode, we'll start implementing the sorting functionality for both the inventory and the storage box. If this tutorial was helpful or you enjoyed this episode, consider leaving a like or subscribing to the channel to stay updated with future episodes. If you have suggestions or requests for features in the inventory or other tutorials, feel free to let me know in the comments or on the Discord server. If you need help, join my Discord server. I will be happy to assist you. See you next time.